Hi guys, welcome to this video. We're gonna explore graphing absolute value functions on the coordinate plane along with the SmartView software um, from Texas Instruments. It is a free download for your laptops and desktops. You just need to go to education.ti.com. I'm gonna put the link in my description. Um, I strongly suggest you go ahead. There's a free teacher account and there's a free student account. I'm working off of the teacher account that's why my screen looks like the way it does, but I strongly suggest you download the student version and work along the problems with me. It's free for six months as of right now. It's March 31st when I'm making this video. You have it out there for remote learning, so you really should take advantage of it if you haven't already done so. So I wanna go through what it would look like to graph absolute value functions on our calculator. I have a video where we did it manually on graph paper, but here we go. So. Um, first thing we do to graph is press Y equals. So you're going to go ahead and press Y equals here. You're going to see that on my screen, it turns red when I press a button and at the bottom, it's going to keep track of my keystrokes. I did some other things before. That's what all of this is for, but starting at this Y equals here, that's where I'm at. So if I want to just type in the absolute value of X to get the absolute value button, I would click on math. Then I would write arrow over to number. And it's the first function, abs, press enter. And it actually gives me my absolute value bars and it's blinking in the middle. That's where I'm going to put my variable x. And I have absolute value of x. I'm going to go ahead, press graph. And I have my parent function. That beautiful, beautiful parent function. It's right there. Now, you may notice that your screen looks a little wacky because the Intervals for the x-axis look wider than the intervals for the y-axis. So I just want to have us do some adjustments so that it looks more conform. So what I found, a pretty easy way to make it look conform, is to go to Window. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust our y-max and our y-min. So we're going to make the y-min become negative 6. And we're going to make the y-max positive 6. And now hit Graph. And now my intervals look very um, uniform, as uniform as I could possibly make them for right now. And I have that perfect V-shaped graph. So we're going to leave that there. We're not going to touch it. We're going to go back to Y equals right now. We're going to arrow down to Y sub 2, and we're going to enter in a new transformation of that parent function. So we're going to, again, click math, go over to number, select absolute value. Let's type in X. Let's right arrow out of the absolute value bars and then put plus three. Now, if you followed along with my video on absolute value graphs, you should know exactly what this is going to do as far as the transformation goes. Press graph, and our new graph, that x plus three, uh, absolute value of x plus three is right here in red. So there's our parent in blue, and there's our transformation. If I click the trace button, it's gonna give me absolute value of x as my red, and if I arrow up, it's going to tell me this is one as the absolute value of x plus 3. It even tells me my y-intercept, which is my vertex, which is fantastic. Okay, let's go back to y equals. Let's keep those two functions, but now let's go to y sub 3 and do math, absolute value, and let's type in x minus 2 and then put plus 1 at the end. Now... If you remember the lesson about the vertex, the vertex in vertex form here, it's x minus h. So my h value is 2. k is my y value of my vertex, and that's that 1. So we should see that this graph has a vertex at 2, 1. Let's press graph, and there it is. The vertex is at positive 2, positive 1. All right, let's try one more. Let's do math, absolute value. Let's do x plus 4. And then let's do minus 2. All right, so if x minus 2 meant that the, each value of the vertex was positive 2, then x plus 4 actually means that the h coordinate, the x value of the vertex, is actually negative 4. So we're going to see our vertex is at negative 4, negative 2, and that's going to be the new pink graph. Let's take a look. And there it is. My vertex is at negative 4, negative 2. 
So you can see we've tried, and then, so that from the parent function went four units to the left and two units down. Mm -hmm. So we've translated a, a graph up, to the right and up, to the left and down. And obviously you can have any amount of iterations of any of those mixed together. I'm gonna keep my parent function now. I'm going to clear out my other three graphs and I am going to do some other things. So I haven't done anything where A was not one. So let's make A two. So I'm gonna type two math absolute value of x. Now, if you remember this, if the absolute value of the a value is greater than 1, in this case it would be, it's greater than 1, it's going to make our graph skinnier. So I have my parent function in blue and my new graph in red. Let's take a look. And look at that. The red graph is much more narrow than the blue graph. My blue graph is my parent function. My red graph is that um, two times the absolute value of x. It's skinnier. I'm going to head back over to y equals. And let's try um, a fractional value. So I'm going to say 0 0.5. I could enter in a fraction of 1 half. I could enter in any fraction. Any fraction between 0 and 1, the absolute value of it. So positive half, negative half, doesn't matter. Multiplied by the absolute value of x. Let's see what this is going to do. Ah, it makes it much wider. So here's my blue graph, my parent function. If the value of a is 2, it makes it thinner. And if the value is a value between 0 and 1, it makes it wider. Okay, next thing I want to show you is let's say I still wanted to do that skinnier version of 2, but I wanted it to be reflected. What we learned in our other lesson is that if the a value is negative, it's a reflection over the x-axis or a vertical reflection. So I'm going to type in negative 2 math absolute value x graph. Look at that pink graph. That pink graph is a perfect vertical reflection of my red graph. This is, I'm going to hit trace so I could see. This graph here in red... This graph here is red is two times the absolute value of x. And then my pink graph is negative two times the absolute value of x. Pretty cool. Let's try the same thing with taking our y sub 3 equation. So negative 0 0.5 math absolute value of x. Let's hit graph. And that green graph is a perfect a vertical reflection of my black graph. So my black graph is that one half. This is my negative one half. So my negative is a vertical reflection. It's flipped upside down, which is pretty neat. Now you can kind of get carried away here and just keep adding. So if I wanted to add in like three times the absolute, whoops, three times the absolute value of x, Okay, that should be a skinnier version. My yellow should be a skinnier version of my two times the absolute value of x. And there it is. It's a skinnier version. Um, if I wanted something wider than my black graph. So my black graph, that's one half. So if this is three, two, one, then one half, I would have to have a fraction that's closer to zero for it to be even wider. So I'm going to test something out there. Don't mind my dogs. 0 0.25 math absolute value of x. How cool is that?